Butterfly Boxing in association with Mayweather Boxing Channel. I'm here today with Darren Hamilton. Darren, it's great to see you down at Lansbury Gym. Um, see you as well. What are you doing down here? Uh, I'm just doing one-to-one -one sessions. I'm obviously a personal trainer. Um, I train people, teach people how to box. So just before you see me, there's a minute ago. Oh God, I got, I got, I got a mic. Back on mic again. Check mic. My mic sound nice. My mic sound now is check too. Yeah, um, I did a I did a personal training session just before you guys come, and I'm, I'm actually waiting to get a haircut. So I'm passed through, back passed back to the gym to uh, watch the sparring. There's some interesting pros sparring at the moment. So come on, watch the guy spar. Very interesting story. Very interesting. Story. I got in, I got into boxing. I think um, through every every child. Uh, I think I think fighting runs in every child boy's blood, and I think um, what set it off, what ignited it, was watching Rocky II. Uh, Rocky II uh, made me feel like I wanted to be a boxing champion, and then from then uh, I watched it at age 11. Uh, my uncle took me to the boxing gym. I was too young. They said you have to be 12. So for a whole year I did judo, which I didn't like. And then at 12, I started boxing off of the influence of Rocky. So back in 2012, you fought Ashley Fearpain and won the British lightweight title. Um, yeah. What followed after that? Um, what followed was a lot of criticism, but they didn't, you know, because of my style. It doesn't I haven't got I haven't got the greatest rhythmic style? Uh, very awkward, very different, very. Um, uh, how can I say? Yeah, very abstract style, and my style uh, didn't replicate of one of what a champion should have. And then from then, I, I had a lot of criticism, that's, and people saying that you know you're gonna you're gonna lose your next fight. So I just became the underdog in the next fight, which is the challenge for the title, which which Ashley Fearfane should have fought against was a guy called Steve Williams in Liverpool. I had to fight him next, was a massive underdog and beat him every round. Uh, beat him every round, he's never been the same fighter again. Steve Williams has never been the same fighter again. After that, I was underdog again in the next fight again for my second title defence against Adil Anwar. Uh, beat him, again, he was never the same from that. He's just lost, been on a, a, a string of losses. And then I had my third defence. This time was to win the title outright. And um, where I should have defended my title, I was being a champion in London. I defended it in uh, uh, the, 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 the gentleman's hometown, which is Curtis Woodhouse, former ex-football player. Again, this time, I, funny enough, I was the, I was the favourite. He was the underdog, and um, I lost a very close split decision, which no one outside the hall thought I lost. So everyone in the hall thought I, lo I lost, but everyone outside the hall thought I won. And um, you know, there's a politics of boxing, really. I mean. Yeah, so uh, from, from that loss, I've never been given the opportunity to come back on again, you know what I mean? Uh, next, next was supposed to fight Tyro Nurse. Uh, didn't get the opportunity to fight 13 weeks notice, which is what I wanted, because I took the fight with Ashley Fearfain at five days notice and uh, won. But um, since, since then, since earning, since, since earning my right and my name and becoming a, becoming a champion, I felt that I, felt that I had... I should be given 13 weeks, just like any other fighter. And, and, and Matchroom didn't want to give me 13 weeks. No one wanted to give me. No one wanted to fight me with the right amount of notice again after that. And and I, then I just decided to retire. So when you say you retire, you went and you actually fought on a white collar show, Bad Boy Promotion. That's it. Yeah, yeah. The reason for that it was like a, um, a a rebellion against because the only opportunity then I was given then after after um, not being able to fight on bigger shows like Sky and Box Nation was a fight on small hall shows. And I think fighting on the small hall shows is an absolute bump. Uh, you've got to give 25% away to your to the promoter. Yeah, you've got to pay for your, your opponent. You've got to pay for this. Basically, you're, you're, it's like you're pay, you, you've, you've basically got to perform, prepare for your performance and sell tickets to your performance. And I think that's a, that's a bag of shit. Sorry for my language, but it's the truth. It's a bag of shit. And I think that boxers and fighters is the hardest sport uh, in the world, to ha imagine that you're doing three jobs, whatever whatever sport where you do three jobs, and I think there's a load of shit. So I then said to myself, I co-promote on a white collar boxing event, and I just said to myself, do you know what? I'm gonna go out with a bang. In my last fight, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna fight this. I'm gonna fight. I'm gonna fight the only guy to have ever have knocked me out, Daryl Setterfield. I'm gonna fight him, beat him, not depart with any money. Yeah, okay, I paid him, but that I paid him, but but I didn't, I didn't have to part with any money. I kept all of my ticket sale money, and. I'm just going to go out like that. It was, it, it, was, it was a statement, a massive statement. And I just think to myself that we do need, we need, um, we need more people like, like how, how Floyd is now come back into the game. He's got a bit of money and he's actually pumping that money back into fighters so that they can get paid a bit more for their fights. We need people like that. And, 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 how, and Al Heyman, so I'm hearing. 
you know what I mean? Because um, fighting is a hard sport. It's, it's too hard to get punched in your face with eight-ounce gloves and get paid minimal or less than you should get. Do you think we've got anyone over here like Floyd Mayweather that might be doing that? I think we had, like, Ricky Hatton was the saviour. Story goes, so I'm, so I'm hearing is that he had a lot of, he had a few million in the, in the bank and instead of paying the tax man, you could, I think there's some sort of thing, you can put it back into a business or something like that. So that, for, 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 through that way, he wasn't really looking to make profit off of, off of, of promoting boxing. And a lot of guys uh, who was on Hatton promotion made a lot more money off of, through Hatton than they would do if there was a boxer than anyone else. So yeah, someone like Hatton, maybe uh, a retired former two-time, three-time world champion or whatever, come back to Britain and, and, and pump it back. I think that's, that's what we need. Finally, obviously you've got the biggest fight coming up that everyone's talking about right now, Triple G and Brooke. What yeah. are your thoughts on this fight? Do you know what? It's funny enough, you know, because you know she she predictions. You know what's funny about predictions is like everyone everyone tries to be a, um like oh, an expert and stuff like that. But if you look in the tr if you look at the real truth, no one really really knows. Does that make sense? There's only there's only there's only there's only one fight that I would bet my house on. I was only one fight that I bet my left, my my, 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 my pinky finger on, and that, that the only fights, sorry, the only fights would be Floyd Mayweather because I just thought that he's an absolute genius, and I thought that every fight that he goes in, he, he's just gonna, he's just, he's just, he's just gonna win, even if it's close, he, he he's gonna win. Um, with fights like this, it could be a shocker. Look how many fights you thought that like, the person was was the underdog, underdog. How many times the underdog has won? How many times has the underdog won? How many times have you been wrong about fights? But obvious, the obvious, the obvious. Money is going to be on GGG. Do you know what I'm going Stoppage six to eight. Do you know what I'm going But if Brook is going to win, he ain't going to win by a knockout. So it's going to be points. Very hard fight. Do you know what I'm going to Two ways. Like I said, I'm never, I'm never going to bet. I'm never going to say one because no, no one really knows. But if you're asking for the smart money, if it was money to win money, if it was to, if it was to win money, yeah, then I would say if you wanted to win your money, you didn't want to lose your money. You didn't. You did not want to lose your money. I'd say GGG stoppage finish. It ain't no GGG points. It's GGG stoppage, and I feel that is going to be GGG boxing. Someone who, is, who replicates an amateur, yeah. GGG is like a pro, and anyone who knows anything about pro sparring amateurs, it takes a couple of rounds to catch the. I was going to swear then, sorry. It takes a couple of rounds to catch them, so to shut them down. No matter how good his footwork is, how well he shuts off the ring, it's going to take him a few rounds to get up to him. Do you know what I'm And when he does finally catch up to him, I reckon it's going to be mid rounds. He obviously, GGG, let's be real, GGG is going to start with the body first. He's not going to aim for the head. Start with the body first to slow down the body and to bring the hands down. Body, 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 body. And eventually, I just think it's going to be mid rounds, six and seven. Kel Brook's elusive movement and stuff. Will, 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 run, will, will run rings around GG for the first three or four rounds and I think he's going to stop him mid rounds six and seven and if, and if Kel Brook somehow I don't know if that day God just said listen I'm going to let you go through today uh, you know, you, you know if, if, if God was on if God's on his side that day I think it'll be uh, points brilliant thank you very much thank you very much yeah wicked thank you Bye.